Okay, I'm gonna have to do this review in parts because I don't have enough time at any given point to actually do the whole thing at once. So we'll see how far I can get and then the rest will have to come in part two, possibly part three. Here's part one. So I've got 6x squared minus 11x minus 10 equals 0 because this says I need to solve by factoring. Two key words there. First of all, I'm supposed to factor. Second of all, I've got to solve and not just stop at the factoring stage. So 6 times negative 10 is a negative 60. So I need two numbers that will multiply to give me a negative 60, meaning the signs are opposite, and will combine to give me a negative 11. So I'm going to choose to do by grouping. I always look for the GCF first, there isn't one. So do 6x squared. All right, so I know 15 times 4 is 60, and if I have a negative 15x and a positive 4x, minus 5, 10 equals 0, then I will be good there. So of these first two here, I'm going to factor out a 3x. That leaves me with 2x minus 5. Here I can factor out a 2, so plus 2. That leaves me with 2x minus 5. If those don't match, there's a problem. So when I actually get that factored, I'm going to move over here. It's going to give me 3x plus 2 times 2x minus 5 equals 0. And um, there it is fully factored. So then to get my solutions, this is going to give me a negative 2 thirds and a positive 5 halves. There we go. All right, so the second one. I'm going to set it equal to 0, so that will give me 125x cubed minus 5x equals 0. Factor out my GCF, which is 5x. That's going to leave me with 25x squared minus 1. Okay, so this here is the difference of two squares, so it's going to give me 5x. Oops. 5x, and then this will be 5x minus 1, and 5x plus 1 equals 0. Then when I go to get my solutions, this is going to give me 5x equals 0 is 0, and then this will give me a positive 1 -fifth. This gives me a negative 1 -fifth, so I can do plus or minus 1 -fifth. There are my solutions. Then <clears throat> this last one, set equal to 0, 8x squared plus 22x minus 21 equals 0. So I try to factor out a GCF and there isn't one. So 8 times negative 21 is 168. That is a negative 168. Okay, so the signs will be different. So I can go through my factors, and I'm going to end up with 6 times 28. A little hint here. I've got 1 and 168, right? And then 2 and 84. And remember, if this is divisible by 3, then if I add these up, that's divisible by 3. So 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 8 is 15. So I know it is divisible by 3. And 3 goes into this 50. Times. Okay. So then, let's think about it this way. If a number is divisible by, well, is it divisible by 4? Yes, it's divisible by 4 because since it's divisible by 2 and this is even, so I can get a 4 out of it, right? All I have to do is take half of that to get here. That's 42, not divisible by 5. If a number is divisible by 6, then it's also divisible by 2 and 3. So since it's divisible by both of these, I know for sure it is divisible by 6. So all I have to really do, this is already divided by 3, then I can just take that and divide it by 2. Okay, make sure you can get through this stuff quickly and you understand how the numbers are related to each other so you're not trying to, to divide every single time. All right, so if the signs are opposite, I'm going to be subtracting. I could, I could keep going and get more factors, but I think I found my winner here because 28 minus 6 gives me 22, which means the 6 is going to be negative here going to give me 8x squared plus 28x minus 6x minus 21 equals 0. So to factor out of these first two terms here, I can take out a 4x. That's going to leave me with 2x 
plus 7. Got to make sure I take out my negative here, so I can't take out the negative 6, so I can take out negative 3. And that's going to leave me with 2x plus 7 equals 0. So then I get 2x plus 7 times 4x minus 3 equals 0. So I've got it factored. My solutions then are going to be negative 7 halves and positive 3 fourths. And there you go. Factor, factor, factor. We need to be factor wizards. All right, number four. It says find the x and y intercepts. Intercepts. Okay, x and y. So make sure that you understand what that means. If I'm asking you for an x-intercept, then that answer should be an ordered pair form. If I ask you just for the zeros or the roots, then that can be in your set notation. So I think that you probably prefer it that way, and so let's think of it in that way when I'm looking at that. I'll write the actual intercepts in here. But to get my zeros, pretty easy to do. It's going to give me negative 1, 3, and 8. To actual, actually answer the question, which is the x-intercepts, that's going to give me negative 1, 0, 3, 0, and 8, 0. Okay. Then my y-intercepts, to get that, I'm just, I'll plug in 0 for x. That means I'm going to get a negative 3 times a negative 8 times 1 cubed. 1 cubed is pretty easy, so I just have the 3 times the 8, which is 24. Again, it's an intercept, and so I need an ordered pair. That's 0, 24. End behavior, the degree here is 3, 4, 5, so it's odd, and the leading coefficient is positive, so it's going to act like a cubic and look like that. All right, so number five. I'm going to look at the, find the zeros first. Uh, that gives me a zero and a positive nine. So my x-intercepts then are at zero, zero, and at nine, zero. Then I need my y-intercept. Well, if I have an x-intercept of 0, 0, then my y-intercept is 0, 0. Because once I plug 0 in for that, it doesn't matter what else is happening. Then the degree here is 4, so it's even and it's negative. So it's going to look like this. Okay. Now we're going to find the end behavior using limit notation. If you can do this part right here, you can totally do this limit. Uh, okay, so in behavior, this has a degree of, this is 3, 4, 5. So it is odd and it is negative. So the in behavior is going to look like that. So then when I think the limit of the function as x approaches positive infinity, so the bigger and bigger x gets, the smaller and smaller y gets, so it's going to approach negative infinity. The limit of the function as x approaches negative infinity, so as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, y gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so then that's going to be positive infinity. So this next one, the degree is 1, 2, 3, 4, so it is even and it's positive, it's going to look like this. So the limit of g of x as x approaches infinity, so as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so does y. And as x approaches <coughs> negative infinity, <coughs> excuse me, as x approaches negative infinity, then y is going to approach infinity. Now we're going to sketch, label the x and y axis. Labeling is the part where some of y'all aren't actually doing that. All right, so I need my zeros. That's going to give me negative 4 negative 1, and 3. Then I want to look at if there's anything happening here. This right here is a double root, which means this has a bounce, which means that it's going to be tangent to the axis there. Then I need to find my y-intercept, so that's going to give me a negative times 1 times 4 squared times a negative 3. This is going to be 16 times a negative 3, which is a negative 48. And then that's negative, so it's positive 48, because that is my intercept there. And my end behavior, this is 2, 3, 4, so it's even and it's negative. So 
it's going to look like this. All right, so I'm up here at 048 on my line or set, and that's the bell. So I will have to start here in part two.